Hello, folks, and welcome back to Combo Week. I'm Phil Gallagher, a.k.a. Thraben U, and for yet another day, we're going to be trying some degenerate combos. So uh, most of this week is supported by Sean K, and the last thing I need to do is play a modern graveyard deck, and that has led me to Living End. Um, so for those of you following modern competitively, um, Living End is on the rise. It's about 4% of the metagame currently, which is an uptick for it. And I think the most popular combo deck is Hammer Time at about 5%. Um, so this deck is picking up some traction. For those of you not familiar with the general idea, your ultimate goal is to cast the card Living End, uh, which you're going to see in the left side in this new window here. I got some feedback asking for me to do this. Uh, folks, let me know in the comments if you like this better than me zooming in on the card. So what Living End does is each player exiles all their creature cards from their graveyards, then sacrifices all the creatures they control, and they put the cards they exiled from their graveyard onto the battlefield. So we're not playing this card fairly. We are going to play this card via either Shardless Agent or Violent Outburst, both of which have Cascade. And since there's no cards in this deck other than Living End that on the surface cost like less than three, we always Cascade into Living End and we will have three chances to kind of go off using this combo. In order to fill our graveyard, most of the cards in this deck have cycling or things that are basically cycling. There's a couple things like Waker of Waves that aren't true cycling, but like basically have the same effect. So your goal is spend like two or three turns dumping some creatures into the sideboard, and sometimes that will involve pitch casting something like a Grief or a Subtlety or something like that and then go ahead and cascade into a living end. A handful of these things are either like one mana or free, uh, as in the, the case of Street Wraith here. Uh, so you can actually fill up your graveyard pretty quickly. Um, oddly enough, this like very competitive combo deck ends up beating people with creatures that like feel like draft playables, uh, which is pretty cool. Some of these creatures on the higher end of the curve end up being pretty gross. Um, and, like, channel is another thing that's not technically cycling, but still gets your creature card into the graveyard for some amount of value. Sideboarding is sort of weird with this deck, because, again, since you're playing Violent Outburst and Shardless Agent, and you're trying to take advantage of the Cascade mechanic going and always hitting your living end, you can't really play cheap interaction which often leads this deck to playing more pitch cards or other things that otherwise can kind of cheat their mana cost. So there's lots of things like Force of Vigor and Endurance in the sideboard that can be pitch cast. Um, I think last thing I want to say here is that this deck is playing a bunch of Force of Negation, which is a Force of Will effect if it's not your turn. And if you are violent outbursting on your opponent's turn, you can use Force of Negation to protect your own combo, which is something that Force of Negation normally can't do in a format like Legacy, because you're usually comboing off on your own turn with something like, say, a Show and Tell or a bunch of uh, Ritual Mana into a Tendril of Agony or something like that. Um, I think that's most of what I have to say here. Um, this is a pretty objectively powerful modern deck, so uh, hopefully I win some modern games for a change, because I feel like I usually take an absolute beating when I play Brews in modern. Anyway, if you're new here and you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing, and if you're a regular, please throw me a like before this video begins. That's the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's battle. Okay, I have an enabler in my hand. I need more mana than what I have, but like if you take a look at this hand, I have one free redraw and multiple cheap redraws. I think that's going to just be like totally fine. Um, the, the jig is basically going to be up immediately, but I think I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's fine. What is this? Okay, the Esper one. Uh, fantastic. Let's shock here, and then I can use this to get green later. I will pay my life. And uh, we can go ahead and call it my opponent's turn. 
I don't know entirely what this means for my opponent, but I'm going to kind of assume we're either in like the control or reanimator ballpark. Okay. Great Wraith is probably fine. Uh, all right, we're gonna, gonna cycle through a lot of cards here. Um, mostly I'm looking to see if I hit my next land drop more so than anything else. A grief is interesting. Um, the Waker of Wigs let me take anything, right? Yeah. I think I use this. I don't need to do that now. I can wait on that in most cases, I think. And, oop, opponent's taking some actions here. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that is feeling reanimator-ish to me. So, assuming I hit my land drop, I can just go off with double force of negation back up. Um, which sounds pretty good to me. My life total's a little low. I've taken a lot from Triple Street Wraith, plus a couple shock lands here. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Oh, opponent is taking some second main phase action. And it looks like they're shocking for something. But the fairy would be really fucking annoying, yeah. Um, that's probably annoying enough that I force of negation it. Um, this isn't a daze format, so I think I can go ahead and make some decisions first with the Waker of Waves. Breeding pool for green. Ow. And go ahead and do this whole song and dance. Men are untapped. Yeah. All right, so we'll take that land. And I think I'm going to force this itching the River Winder. All right, good stuff. So now there is a world where I can try to shardless agent now if I want, or I can just violent outburst on my opponent's end step. I think I'm gonna violent outburst on my opponent's end step. Cause like that lets me violent outburst, fight over it using force of negation, pitching waker of waves, and then if it doesn't work, I can shardless agent afterwards. That that just feels better to me. I wonder what we'll cascade into. Oh my gosh, it's a living end. How curious. All right, so my opponent's going to try to counter. And I will go ahead and force pitching the card that I don't need. And it seems like I'm good to go. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's 3, 6, 9, 14, 21. E Z. Okay, um, what do I want against my opponent's deck? Endurance to fight against their graveyard is reasonable. I don't know if I actually need that. And then fights over creatures and planeswalkers. Dealing with Teferi is kind of important because if a Teferi is in play, I can't cascade into Living End. I could definitely see doing a couple more of these. I don't know how badly I need the endurance. Like, I don't know how quickly my opponent is going to actually set things up. Um, Mystical Dispute isn't crazy either, either just as a way to protect my combo, because it feels like if I do the combo, I win most of the time. I don't know how many um, Supreme Verdict-esque cards my opponent has. Um, the other thing I don't know here is, like, what is the, like, just objective worst card in this deck that I usually start with cutting? Is it Architects of Will? See these games being long enough that I realistically could, like, channel for returning an enabler to my hand. I'm not sure what my worst card here is. Maybe I'm over sideboarding with four cards here. Maybe Architects of Will is just a generic 3-3 is kind of medium. Although it, like, messes... If I take that out, it messes with my black count for Grief. Maybe I Trim Grief, Trim Curator. Play a couple more counter spells and call it good. I don't know, maybe Grief is better than Subtlety. These are my first rounds with the deck. These are things that I just don't know. Oh yeah, this is this is fine. Like I have a couple of redraws to find my third mana source, and I have a few creatures that can just immediately hit the graveyard. Eh, that's not a great draw. Um, but it's okay. Like there's there's three of them in the deck for a reason. Like you anticipate that over the course of a game you will draw some number of them. And in the games that go 
really, really long, you can just start casting big, dumb 7 drops. Like, at the end of the day, if you cast a 5-5 five, five hexproof creature against a control opponent, like, that is a problem, right? Like, you're only so well equipped to deal with those sort of things. All right, there's another land, which is fantastic. Um, I think I'm going to shock myself and pass the turn and then make the decision about what to do based on what happens on my opponent's turn. I don't know that I'm really ready to go off yet. Oh, don't like that. This is not a blue spell, and I can't counter that anyway. All right, uh, I think we are converting into fair game mode as of right now. And uh, we're going to try to cast a bunch of big dumb idiots this game, unfortunately. Um, I have a couple of Force of Vigors that I in the main deck, right? Oh, nope, not in this version. I looked at two versions. One of them had main deck Force of Vigor. Okay. So put this on the top or bottom of my opponent's library by pitching a blue card. I don't think I want to do that. I think I'll just uh, nuke that this way instead. Like, without the ability to just living end for free, a lot of things just become less attractive. All right. I also want to just hard cast this in a couple of turns. Yeah, I think I'll plan on hard casting that next turn. All right. Embarrassing creature go. So I, I go ahead and cascade with this. Uh, and since I don't expect to take that card out of play, I will just cast this and let it get uh, countered by Chalice of the Void to take it out of my deck. And I got a 2-2. Two -two. Then I'll have a 3-3. Three -three. And then a few turns down the line, I'll have a 7-7. Seven -seven. Although if I'm being completely honest, there's a lot of worlds where I end up cycling that and just like using it to try to find something that I can cast before 7 mana. How many things am I looking at in that regard? Ported out some number of these. I've got a handful of things, but... Situation is definitely kind of medium here. Street Wraith, uh, not exactly castable with my mana base. All right, in we go. Go, little buddy. I believe in you. All right. Um, I'm on an uphill battle here. Things aren't lost, but... Uh, all right. This is the baby dig through time spell. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so this card has flashback for seven, and on the flashback, looking at the top seven and getting two of them is pretty sick. All right. Let's play a 3-3. Three, three. Um, I don't think I need to take damage here. Yeah, this was not the intended use of the card, but uh, Dallas is very much a real thing. All right, so I've got no legal targets for that, so that's just gonna fizzle. I can also probably take... Get rid of this upkeep stop that I have. Um, given how many lands I have in hand, I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep this. Uh, and let's attempt to bash in for five. I imagine there's plenty of things that can happen in combat, but I don't know entirely what my opponent is going to have access to. Um, so now, situation's kind of on them to uh, find a sweeper or something of that ilk. There's a lot to activate. Uh-huh. That's symmetrical. If they intentionally did that to put a card into their graveyard for, like, a Delve spell or something, like, I will apologize immediately. All right, a Supreme Verdict, sure. Uh, I don't think I'm going to cycle this. I'm just going to keep this as a threat. Uh, this? This also counts as a threat, technically. Super technically. Um, let's have that entered tapped. Let's play this very anemic card. Uh, cascade into this, just cast this, take it out of my deck. There's a 2-2. Two -two. Refreshing myself, this is 6 to activate. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The beginning with one more land drop, that becomes a real threat. Um, and it's going to be like a 2-turn clock, too, because like I probably have to fetch with this Misty Rainforest to cast this Waker of Waves. So like that's definitely a thing. Okay, there's a Teferi. Don't super love that. Okay, opponent's just gonna bounce Shardless Agent. I'm good with that. Alright, I have six. 
This will get me to seven. I have to shock for this, which I don't love, but I, I think I need to cast stuff. That just feels quite necessary to me right now. Uh, so I will shock and cast a big boy. See if it works. I'm not like super, yeah. I was not super optimistic about my chances of that actually working, given like that my opponent had been holding a lot of cards without doing something that actively wins the game. I'm expecting to see a Teferi Plus followed by just... Oh, okay. I was expecting to see Teferi Plus followed by just, like, hit me for half my life total. Um, but that did not happen. Alright, um, that's a strange pump spell. That's all that is at this point. Um, let's do the whole play a 2-2 thing again. Alright, so now I'm at the point where I don't have anything left to uh, cascade into, so all those cards just kind of go back into my library. All right, there's another land drop for the opponent. I'm very surprised they're not just trying to turn the corner on the game and get me dead, um, but I guess I'll take it. So they have more than enough mana to activate and turn one of these things into a blocker, so I can't really attack right now. I've just got to chill. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, but it's the situation that I'm in. And... I guess if my opponent doesn't have anything else to do, they'll just scry two at the end of turn. Um, my opponent has missed a few things this match, I think. Um, so, like, no judgment, because I mess up a lot of things in Modern because I don't play the format very often, but I imagine that my opponent is newer. Okay, and there's a Snapcaster Mage into what? Are you just going to draw more cards? Just going to draw more cards. Drawing cards is awesome. But, like, having played a lot of modern control decks in the past, and by, by the past, I mean, like, many years ago, like, there is a time where you just go, like, it is time for this opponent to be dead, and you just need to, like, turn the corner on the game. And I feel like my opponent has already passed that corner. Like, they've got a Chalice keeping me from comboing off. They have a Planeswalker keeping me from comboing off. That Like, that's two layers of protection. And I'm dead in approximately two turns to this thing beating down. Like, get in that red zone. Wow, still no activation of these man lands. Alright. Like, I'm good with it, because it gives me more time to draw bullshit like this. Alright, get in there, little Hexproof friend. I mean, not really little Hexproof friend, but, you know. Um, this is a lot of damage to attempt playing a Shardless Agent. I guess the two damage is the two damage from Snapcaster anyway. But if I go to seven, then I'm 100% dead to this. I guess if I don't put something in play, I go to one. Not great either way. I don't think I'm going to play it. Like, I'd rather just play the Shardless Agent next turn without costing life. Because if my opponent is going to continue to just, like, not activate the man lands, like, I might as well take advantage of that. Um, that's not bad. Not quite good enough, because, like, there's both Ch uh, the, the Chalice and Teferi in play. But it's damn close. I can get rid of one of those via some other means. Well, no, actually, I guess with this other living and in hand, that doesn't really work, fortunately. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what exactly I'm playing towards, because I felt dead for just so many turns, but my opponent is just, like, not killing me. All right, yeah. So I'm I'm just, like, dead on board. I mostly just want to see if my opponent is going to activate the mana land here and actually kill me, because that's, like, super important information. Okay, so at this point, they're fine with it. Uh, I'm not going to show the Ottawara, because I think I'm dead enough that it doesn't matter here. All right, um, GG. Okay, so now that I know that my opponent is packing Chalice, I should probably consider, like, Foundation Breaker or Force of Vigor. Um, maybe over Subtlety. Kind of tough to have to deal with both, su like, Subtlety, or sorry, both Teferi and Chalice, so they get answered largely by different cards. Um, maybe let's abandon the Subtlety plan, because this one... Like, deals with them when they are spells, meaning that they're on the stack. Play a couple of Foundation Breakers. I play the Brazen Borrower as a bounce spell that kind of hits both. And I could play more Grief on the play, where I'm just trying to go for it. 
initially. Take a chalice that made my opponent's hand keepable. I buy that. If I do that, do I go for fewer counter spells? Maybe I do fewer counter spells on the play. Play like one more answer to, or well, really, a couple more answers to chalices. I could also play Force of Vigor as well. Uh, maybe Grief isn't great because it's not hard castable. Um, this hand's okay. I think I keep this. I can Boseju you a chalice. And I have two cyclers in hand and a protection spell. Um, let's shock here. And I'll plan on cycling an Architects of Will at my opponent's end step. The Architects aren't necessarily my, like, primo like thing that I want to be cycling because they're just kind of like whatever in terms of power level, but it's probably okay. Um, That's awkward. Do I win by putting seven-ish points of power into play with stripping two cards from my opponent's hand? Unsure, but probably willing to try. All right. Let's do this thing. Okay. Oh, it has a lot of counter spells. What do these counter? Anything? Counter anything. I can take the Dovin's Veto, let them play Chalice of the Void, and then play Violent Outburst, take their Solitude so they can't answer my onboard creatures, and just kind of hope that's good enough. I think I like that. All right. I'll, I'll punch my hole. I'll see if it's good enough. It becomes, like, awkward if they draw, like, an actual factual counter spell that's castable this turn. Yep. Like, was, was expecting that. And are you shocking? Not shocking. Okay, they're just leaving up consider. Let's fetch a breeding pool here for green. Cost me a little life. I'll junk that chalice. And that gets them an island. All right. Um... I want to take a land out of the deck. Sure, I think I will. Fetch. Um, I don't need double red for anything. This can just be a basic. Let's go for the Violent Outburst and hope that the one card that I don't know isn't actual factual counter spell. All right, Cascade into Living End. What does this do? Back in any order. Um, I think I'm just going to do that on myself because I'm running on empty here. Okay, yeah, I will take my opponent's Solitude here. The one card I didn't know about is Island. And with Architect of Will, fine. I think I put Sanctum, Regardless Agent, and Street Wraith, which has randomly gotten smaller. All right, so I've, I've punched a hole here. And uh, we'll, we'll see if this is good enough to kind of get started. If this doesn't, like, actually... Uh, that's not actually bad for me. Yeah, so I just go... Cycle this. Um, I don't need to play this untapped for any reason. This is in a daze format. And I will go ahead and Shardless Agent. Cascade into Living End. I will get those creatures back. Uh, this does some slightly awkward things. Again, I'll do this on myself. Okay, my opponent is going to answer my grief. I'll use this to take their Planeswalker. Um, I just can't deal with the exiling the tapped creatures right now. Okay. Um, what am I looking at doing here? I think I just want to hard cast a flyer next turn. I'm going to put the Shardless Agent furthest down. I can play this tapped. Opponent has, like, some counter spells available. I'll kind of just try to force them to go through. I think I'm just sending the crew in here and uh, see if my opponent wants to trade. They do want to trade. So the other thing I can do actually here is just hold up a Force of Negation and counter an Archmage's Charm when my opponent tries to draw two and just like keep five power on board. I actually think I'm good with that. If I just play Curator, it just trades. Um, which doesn't necessarily feel great to me. Like, I'd rather use my Force of Negation to trade right now, I think. Um, it's a little weird, because, like, stuff can happen. Uh, yeah, sure, that's fine. Like, if I trade 
Force of Negation for one of those, and then I trade Curator of Mystery for another that leaves my opponent with basically nothing, and then they don't deal with my onboard power. Send them. Brings opponent to 12, and I'm going to cast this to try to make it so that my opponent has to answer this card with the counterspell mode of this card so they can't draw towards more relevant things. Um, it leans a little bit more into a second Supreme Verdict, uh, which would be unfortunate. But I don't really want to give them time. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite on a two-turn clock, but I might realistically be on a two-turn clock uh, if I draw a reasonable card. There's also worlds where I use like Violent Outburst as a finisher. All right, um, Solitude's very good here. All right, goodbye, Street Wraith. Um, how is doing this? Probably medium right now, but good in a turn or two. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Do I want Ottawara? Like, bounce a lifelinky idiot out of play? I don't think so. I think I just want Street Wraith. I think I just want to attempt to combo off and do the bigger thing. Now let's take the Street Wraith. Cycle it immediately. Play that land. I don't think I want to attack here. I think I don't want that solitude coming back. It's like all opponent gets from a living end is a solitude, whereas right now I get Architects, Curator, Walker, Street Wraith. Eh. All right, not great for me. Um, yeah. I'm going to take three. My opponent's going to gain three here. Oh, that's just that's just super unfortunate for me. I guess I have to try to kill this Teferi. Alright, so this is going to be casting this idiot saying no to the living end to return it back into my deck. And then I potentially have to trade Guardless Agent for Solitude and then play another one to try... Excuse me, to try and kill the Teferi. I assume my opponent's not attacking here because they're going to try to hold back to protect Teferi. Um, and I am correct in that regard. Um, so let's send in, and I assume this trades for Solitude. I am correct. So opponent gains a little life there. I will just play this as an idiot. And, like, Teferi is going to plus to three, meaning that I just can't immediately take it out in combat. All right, what do we got here? Another Solitude. That's the third one of the game. That's tough. Um, yeah, opponent is doing a pretty good job of protecting this Teferi. Um, life's not great. Oh, God. All right, so now I am, like, very clearly on the fair plan. I think I need to, like, fish for a Hexproof card here, because, like, Teferi can just bounce this if I end up playing it on seven mana. Um, not a great situation for me. Hey, big hexproof idiot. That is exactly the card that I wanted. All right, all right. Am I fully giving up on the ability to living end this game? Probably, but not a hundred percent. So I'm gonna say no with this, and like ab absolutely just at the mercy of whatever opponent top decks here. Like they've got some agency with their Teferi. Oh no, what is this okay? Divination's not the end of the world. I honestly would be more scared of them keeping that to answer this. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bash in. We're gonna try to answer this to fairy. Um, I, I I need to just take that off the board. All right, no longer in bounce range, and I'll play a two two idiot. I'll keep that in my deck just just in case, because like there's worlds where I draw another like foundation breaker or Boseju or something and can answer this after killing it to fairy. Yeah. Like, very, very happy to see counter spells being used on things like Shardless Agent rather than the River Winder. I'm very much good with that. I might have to, like, shift to... Uh, I, I probably need to draw towards land or the other one. I don't think I get to just uh, try to greed both of those. All right, I need to play this as a land. I also think I'm going to hold back this creature to stop taking hits from Solitude. I right, don't really love my position, but, like, there's there's hope for me. Um, 
But we're definitely at the stage of the game where my opponent's deck is favored over my deck. Uh, wow. I'm going to hold. I don't know if that's right, but I'm going to hold. The weird, the weird thing about it is some of my lands, like these are going to be ETB tapped lands, which make it better for me to cycle one now in case like I need to take yet another turn in order to get these in play. Oh, my opponent's so likely to have at least one counter spell. I think I am going to try to work through both sides of that. My right, opponent's just going to take a tempo play here. Whack me down to six. That's fine. Um, okay, cool. So play that. Jam a shardless agent. I will not cast that spell. And we'll see if I die to something like, you know, end of turn solitude. Get Shardless Agent out of the way. Crash in for a bunch. Opponent's doing something. Oh, no. They're, okay, they're just purely deck thinning. That's fine. All right, sure. I guess there's a world where I have to worry about, like, instant speed supreme verdicts as well. All right. Attempt one at casting big dumb thing. Okay. Uh, it is not working. Going to be Snapcaster, Archmage's Charm in all likelihood. So that's going to counter this and leave me in the situation where if opponent uses a removal spell on Shardless Agent, I'm basically going to be dead. Um, but, like, at this point, like, we'll, we'll see what they have, right? Like, I, I only have so many cards that have relevant text right now. And I'm... Uh, I think I just need to trade that body there. Like, the Solitude is more important body like unquestionably but I, I just don't think I can take the hits right now all right attempt number two at casting big dumb idiot that I hope wins me the game all right well it resolved um I'm not going to cycle this street wraith if I can help it I'm in this situation now where like I can hold the board versus a solitude, but like this Teferi is still giving my opponent value, and I basically have three dead cards in hand, so like situation's not good. I'm also a little oh wow. Okay, I've just purely bounced the chalice out of play. If I had a blue card in hand, I could have uh force of negation that, although that I wouldn't have hit if I went for the street wraith. I think I just gotta chill here. My Force of Negation is now live in a way that it wasn't previously, so, like, I have that going for me. No. Absolutely not. Okay, that one can't be countered, so, uh, that's fine. That's happening. That's probably the death knell for me. Like, that doesn't get this out of the way, but that is a lot of card advantage. I'm going to need to draw... Just some big, dumb, fat stuff off the top. I think at this point I'm willing to cycle this to just get a little deeper. Uh, back? Yeah, maybe I attack here. Puts me to one on the backswing, assuming opponent lets this die. And I can die to just another flash creature. Um, But I think that card is just going to beat me long term. Um, so I'm willing to take the risk here. I'm also just low on time, so I can only fart around for so long. Okay, yeah, scry away. All right, um, that was one top, one bottom there. Okay, that's another just massive source of card advantage, um, which is not great for me. Also going to one here, assuming opponent doesn't want to hold that creature back to protect Jace. So if I go to one, I can't really attack with the river winder. Okay, that's not great either. Okay, this time they did actually just return nothing. If they had snapped off their Chalice of the Void, I would have gone for the last living end in my deck there. Alright, I'm at one. Life's bad, opponent has multiple Planeswalkers. Um, I don't expect to win from here on a number of different angles. Not technically dead, and I've played this out one out for this long, so like, might as well continue. Um, but this is, this is a slog in a direction that is not favorable for me. I wonder if I can win by decking, straight up. Actually. One has 16 cards left, I don't know how many win conditions I actually have. I've seen three Solitudes already, I've seen a Snapcaster Mage. Not crazy that I win by decking. Yeah, that's fine. 
I hadn't really thought about that angle. Oh, okay. There's that. That's a problem. That kills me next turn if I don't draw a creature. Actually, it probably kills me next turn if I do draw a creature because my opponent has multiple bounce effects in play. But I guess I'll make my opponent do it. They weren't, like, super going for my creatures. Uh, like, they weren't super going for the kill in other games either. Um, I guess they've also probably got a colonnade somewhere in those 14 cards that I'd have to think about. Okay. Um, that kills me with the man land attack. All right. GG's. That was a slug. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should have just like boarded out the force of negations and just kept a higher density of things that were castable. All right. Um, round two, I have one lands. I have multiple cyclers that... I can go, like, I have three cyclers that I can go through, but I don't have a way to actually win the, like, I'm missing both ways to win the game and lands. It feels to me like that's a mulligan. Like, the force of negations here aren't doing me any favors. Uh, yeah, I think I like this one better. The worst card here, the force of negation or the turtle? Probably the force of negation blind. Let's bend that. All right. Street Wraith, sure. Just play this and get it out of the way. I'll just need to hit one land. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a turn three. Like, eh, okay. I guess I do this now. I don't really think my opponent's going to take it. But, like, don't want to be wrong there. Like, I, I assume 100% of the time, it, like, the Shardless Agent just goes there. So we're probably playing against a Shadow deck from the look of things. And I'll just plan on using Waker of Waves at my opponent's end step. I also just have, like, a bounce effect for if my opponent does play out a creature. Um, which I would pretty happily use. Alright. Uh, end step, do this thing. Do I want a Force to very, very, very specifically back up Violent Outburst, or do I just want a generic card? I think I just want a generic card. Right. Ottawara is kind of whatever here. Um, let's, let's do some cycling. That is not a card I want to draw. Let's continue cycling. That is a card I want to draw, and there's the punish for not keeping the, um, force, but I wouldn't have gotten to this this turn if I didn't, so, like, there's that as well. How am I doing in terms of stuff in the graveyard? One, two, three... Or five, five creatures in graveyard. That's pretty respectable. Right, my opponent is just purely cycling that dress down, which is fine. And uh, let's see what they can do. Like, I'm not super worried about a Death Shadow type card right now, because, like, I both have a bounce spell and a living end to help deal with that. But I do potentially have counter spells to worry about, which I'm not actually great against. Breathing pool. Doesn't really matter much. Our breeding pool. I was like, it's pretty unlikely that I end up hard casting something like that most of the time. Oh, hey. That's pretty cool. So now I will play an Ottawara. And I don't I don't know when to cast this. I think I'll let my opponent take the card. Yeah, because there's worlds where they spend mana, and then I try to combo off in response, and I quite like that. Right. So, here's the Violent Outburst. I do the Cascade. I cast the Living End. And if opponent has a counter spell, I just follow up with uh, Force of Negation. Pitch and my Turtle. And since opponent is at 10 life, that should instantly kill them. Yeah, good stuff. All right, um, what do I want versus this deck? I can play Leyline to make Discard not a thing. I guess I should be checking whether or not decks are Chalice decks, because I don't know the sideboards of modern decks. I don't play very frequently. All right. Um, at a quick glance, first two I saw do not have it. Okay. So keeping that in mind, I think I'll play some Leyline of Sanctities to fight against discard and consider mystical dispute as something that lets me protect my combo. How do I feel about subtlety? Like, it dealing with creature spells is kind of nice. 
got to make my cuts somewhere. And this is something that like doesn't cycle. I could see getting rid of this from here. I think I like flyers over non flyers. So like protective will seems cuttable. I can't cut too many or like grief starts to be a little more questionable. Although like Leyline and this are kind of taking some of the role of grief. Maybe I go grief out when I'm on the draw. Or maybe not fully out. Or I could play a brazen borrower to just bounce a giant death shadow out of play. Sure. Uh yeah, again, please don't take my sideboard as sideboarding as gospel here. Like I'm very much figuring this out on the fly. I need land. I am on the draw. I have one immediate cycling effect. If I hit a land in my first two draws, I can use this to try to get the other. I think this is okay. Uh, opponent is going to five. Opponent is going to four. Unexpected. Maybe they do have a chalice they are mulliganing for. Those, those were quick mulligans. That was just like, no, 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 no. A ley line of the void instead. Okay, sure. Um, so I, now I'm on operation kill my opponent with idiots. Um, not great, but it is what it is. Okay, I am very happy to draw that. That is a very good turn four play if I can get to it. Um, I cannot think of a reason why I have to, to do this stuff now. Okay, there is a thought seize. That's fine. Good. But it's fine. I will respond to that. Um, I will shock. I'm going to need the green. Uh, and uh, let's just start cycling. I might force of negation depending on what things look like here. It's not really a good force of negation, but it's very hard for me to leave up mystical dispute mana and still like work towards getting my land drops. And I don't really want to lose this flyer because that's how I'm going to beat the Delver. I think I will go ahead and junk the Mystical Dispute. It's possible Shardless Agent number two is worse. Um, it just really depends on how much self-damage my opponent does to themselves over the course of this game. I'm at 14. I've got a few turns. Um, let's cycle this. There's another land drop. Um, do I need red mana if my graveyard is off? The answer is really no. But I don't want to cycle this. I want to cast this to beat Delver. Um, so I will. I will intend on getting a tapped fetch land for that. With the caveat being that if my opponent casts a Thought Seize, I will cycle that instead. I'm glad I waited there. So let's cycle this. That's fine. None of these cards really do a ton. I assume my opponent takes a Waker of Waves because that just lets me keep hitting land drops. And sort of awkwardly use Shardless Agent as a board wipe, but it ends up giving them a 3-4 creature on the ground instead of a 3-2 creature in the air. They have a Street Wraith in Graveyard that they cycled, so like that's a little weird. I is the plan just throw two creatures under the bus? Is that the plan? Like Shardless Agent, wipe Delver, take three... Guardless Agent, don't cast the thing, have double block Street Wraith. Kind of a fucked up plan. Might be where I'm at. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. But like, now I very much know, like, my opponent's plan is mulligan to Leyline, so I can be more prepared for it in game three. Okay. Um, that's rough for me. That takes away my whole plan. You go to four. I think you're a dead card. Okay. Am I more likely to win this game by taking three and going to one? Or am I more likely to win this game by going to two and trying to find something else to block Street Wraith on three mana exactly? That would have to be a Shardless Agent. So I'm probably more likely to win by making a plan with this. I mean, Guy Turtle can bounce that thing to opponent's hand. Okay. I will I will bash for two. That puts my opponent to nine. I guess my plan is try to bounce Street Wraith and then hope opponent has, like, stone cold nothing. 
Um, not a great plan. Uh, but we'll we'll see. So, bash for two. We'll go upkeep, bounce that. And uh, if they have a death shadow or something. They don't. Cool. They do. Bad news for me. I, I, w with my opponent cycling that, they are on a two-turn clock. Uh, fuck, I think they found, like, a Garmag Angler or a Merktide region or something. All right, I think I'm dead to that. Yeah, I'm dead to that in the air, and I can't kill with a lethal attack here. Can't even kill myself with Street Wraith, because I'm at one life. All right, concede. Now I know that my opponent is going to sideboard, or is going to mulligan specifically to Leyline, though. So now I can bring in a few answers to that. Um, let's maybe shift away from Mystical Dispute to fight over things. That'll get me the first two of these. And now do I still want to play Leyline to stop Thoughtseize effects? Yeah, I probably still do, honestly. Maybe I go down Force of Negations. Yeah, maybe I go down Force of Negations, go up Force of Vigor, go up Forest to make those more castable, and then play one Grief or Endurance to supplement. I don't hate Endurance, because they just have, like, Street Wraiths that can come back from Living End, and they also have, like, Murktide Regents. Do I want more? I don't know that I want more. How is it, like, Brazen Borrower versus Endurance? Endurance is just another green card to help me pitch cast um, Force of Vigor when necessary. I don't know, Brazen Borrower also just bounces Leyline or Murktide Regent, though, so, like, that's a thing. Very unsure on how many things I should be sideboarding. Also, should I just sideboard out a land if I'm bringing in forest? Yeah, that's probably reasonable. One Spire Bluff, Spire Bluff Canal, maybe? Sure. Okay, I have an answer to Leyline in my hand. My hand is otherwise kind of anemic. Is that a keep? Given how aggressively my opponent mulliganed last time, I am going to say yes. But I don't know that that would be true versus... An opponent who just like kept a six card hand last time. Okay. Jesus. Jesus. Ugh. Like, what the fuck? All right. Uh, I'm going to try to kill my opponent by casting three endurances this game. That is absolutely my fucking plan now. Unless it's not my plan. All right. I'm going to have some things to think about. I'm going to pass the turn. Like, ah. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to assume that is just to hurt themselves and not that it represents a counterspell. All right. Um, okay, so, like, this is this is where I choose. Like, do I kill the three ley lines and try to win via a combo route, or do I just, like, play two endurances and just bash my opponent for, like, three turns in a row? Like, it it is probably a right now choice. Actually, I guess it doesn't have to be a right now choice. I can I can wait a turn. Yeah, let's let's wait a turn. Breeding pool. Not pay the life. Let's see what I draw. Well. Okay. Um. This is weird. See what opponent draws. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play a couple of endurances. Opponent has no threat in play yet. I just play Boseju as a green land drop. And, like, if I want to answer ley lines later, I can. I just don't have, like, the combo stuff to kill my opponent with yet. Um, I will get red mana, though, in case I need it. I think that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and shock. And then effectively cycle this. Uh, I'll take a turtle. That's a green card to pitch to these things if I need it. Yeah, I I think I'm going to commit to my bit here. And plan on just playing out endurances and killing my opponent with them. Like, I can pivot and change my mind pretty damn quickly. Uh, yep, that's fine. Not anywhere near a Murktide Regent yet, so I think I can just go ahead and uh, continue the plan. Okay, uh, it's resolved. Let's get those Street Wraiths out of there in case those are relevant later. Relevant for Delve or Living End. All right, it's happened. Uh, yeah. Let's beat. Get you to 11. Repeat something similar next turn. Like, back it up with an Unsummon. Draw two tarts. Discard. Sure. That's fine. Oh, they've junked their fourth ley line. So, this is six already. I think I just cast this endurance now. 
and just like don't fuck around with my opponent accidentally enabling Merktide Regent. Because that's that's one of the ways that I could realistically see myself losing this game is a Merktide Regent slipping in play and stabilizing the board. Although like maybe I'm wrong since I have the Sky Turtle in hand. Like maybe I don't need to do that. Battle That's six damage. Ooh, is a Delver going to jump in the way? I'm totally fine with the Delver jumping in the way. All right, opponent's at seven. I think I cycle some stuff here. I think I start with you. Not 100% sure on that. Um, I am fine with cycling you as well. Gets me to four mana next turn to play this. So I am probably good with cycling this and then fetching a tapped land. Although I am going to just hold up my mana in case I need to use Colossal Sky Turtle's ability. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Do your thing. Okay, there's a discarded Stubborn Denial. A Delver is fine. That's another thing that's just in, like, chump block mode. Um, so let's go ahead and fetch a tapped land here. Grab a Steam Vents and then activate this. And just kind of see where that gets us. Another, or shit, Architects of Will is not hard castable. I don't have actual black mana in this deck. Uh, in which case, I guess I just take one of those to cycle. And I, I guess I should have considered just getting basic island. Yeah, uh, but I'll just turn my creature sideways. If my opponent wants to go to one, it seems like they are in a like perpetual chump block situation. And uh, I'll just play a 4-4 flyer. I guess I didn't play around Stubborn. Or no, Stubborn Dial can't hit creatures. Okay. Um, I don't really know what beats me here. It's like a damnation. Would be kind of hot. Okay, yeah, there is there is the concession. GG's. Oh, yeah, and I did, in fact, keep the opponent off of the Merktide Regent for a while. All right, um, round three. I think I keep this opening hand. Like, I have two ways to cast a living end. I only have a single cycler, but, like, given how many cards of that nature are in this deck, I think I'm okay with that. Um, that's not really a draw I'm looking for. You probably become Force of Negation fodder. Um, thinking about what land I want. I think I'm going to end up shocking off this breeding pool about half of the time. I think I'm just going to play Miss e here and call it a turn. Like, I think I can get the basic island. Sometimes I play tapped breeding pool turn two, and then I can shock off this one. Okay. What flavor? Ooh. That's what flavor you are. Okay. We're going to be playing against presumably some sort of like blue red prowess deck. Um, so I can use these as board wipes if necessary. Um, and it very well may be necessary. Holy shit. Um, I guess let's immediately just cycle this and see if this is going to change any of my, like, land drops or sequencing for the turn. Um, I need more creatures in Graveyard. I'm fine with doing that. Same. I, I, I think I'm just good with it, because I'm probably comboing off next turn. Um, much self-damage is too much self-damage here. But like, I have a 4-4, four, four, a 5-5, five, five, two 3-3s three, three in there already. Do I play tapped Breeding Pool? I don't think I take more damage here. Because, like, this is 12, this is 9. That I'm, like, running into double Lightning Bolt starts to kill me territory. Yeah, I think I'm good with this. So maybe I should have played Scalding Tarn and Fetched instead. All right. Let's, let's see how much this hurts. All right. Two mana... For expressive iteration, I don't think I attack that. I think I just save Force of Negation to try and go off on my opponent's next turn with protection. A Dragon Rage Channeler, absolutely. Like, in the worlds where my spell resolves, them playing another creature has minimal impact on the game. Gut shot, absolutely. I uh, respect the, uh, the commitment to the prowess ability. This is why I was trying to save a couple points of life. Um, this is a lot. So, bring me to nine. Okay. Not bad. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, I have 
multiple counter spells available here. Um, I always have to shock here, unfortunately. At least steam vents. I can die to double lightning bolt. Let's see what I can do. All right, there's living end. All right, I have succeeded. I have a two turn clock in play. Actually, if I violent outburst next turn, is my opponent dead? Five, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, if I violent outburst and then don't cast skate, I guess my opponent's just dead. Um, no. I'll junk a shardless agent there. We're, we're just saying no to that. Boss, last for each instant sorcery you cast this turn. Okay, when it enters the battlefield, it's cry too. Sure. Mm, this is going to be a little awkward, isn't it? Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, so how do I play this? 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If I attack in and my opponent doesn't block, they die to violent outburst unless they have a cheap counter spell. Or I can play more conservatively and hold back my Curator of Mysteries with Force of Negation back up. Prowess here is a little awkward. None of my creatures are vulnerable to a Lightning Bolt. I don't know the list well enough, but I don't know my opponent's list well enough to know how safe this is. I guess I could look. I'll pull up a list from a recent showcase challenge. There's two Spell Pierce that I am playing around. All right, so I'm, all, I'm always playing that tapped. I think I'm just going to two-turn this and just send in three creatures. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, opponent goes to six. I don't know. Maybe there's some worlds where I shouldn't do this because, like, Sprite Dragon plus a Burn Spell or something ends up being pretty awkward. I think I'm okay. I don't know. Like, maybe I should just fire off on that. Ah. Notably, I think if I do end up countering something on my opponent's turn... I just pitch cast Force of Negation to play around Spell Pierce. Yes, that's fine. Okay, if I counter this Consider, I think I'm just good with a win. No, opponent still got one card in hand. I guess I don't counter the Consider. I die to, like, Waver Snag. Okay, there is a Lava Dart in Graveyard now. All right, so opponent crashes in with both creatures. Just absolutely have to block the big one here. All right, there's some prowess triggers. Uh, so this puts me to five. If opponent casts another spell, this becomes a four four. Opponent would have to cast two more spells, which is pretty unlikely. I don't think I have to counter this. I will counter literally whatever this is lava dart. Okay, and this exiles. Uh, I guess at that point, I don't need to pitch cast. Uh, but this leaves me stable at one life, and my opponent dead on the backswing. Ugh. I still don't know if I should have played around the two of spell pierce or if I should have just gone for the kill, because like the prowess haste creatures are like definitely scary. Um, skimming sideboards of these decks, it doesn't look like I have too much to worry about. I guess like Magus of the Moon could randomly be a thing that matters. Relic of Progenitus. Or Soul Guide Lantern could randomly be a thing that matters. Blood Moon. Unlicensed Hearse. Okay, there's a small amount of Graveyard Hate that could be relevant. Um, I think this is going to be a kind of like, go for the combo and use like the Living Ends as breaks on my opponent's creatures as well. Playlines are okay, but I'm more worried about getting hit by large prowess creatures than I am just being burnt out directly. I think I like playing some number of endurance just as like reasonable castable creatures that also could be pitch cast to fuel living and that probably means bringing in forest. I will probably play a brazen borrower as something that can bounce large creatures. Mystical dispute is also reasonable. All right, um, I'm going to board out the Boseju and just assume that if my opponent has Graveyard Hate, I'll shift into Fair Mode. That gives me Forest, and I have four to six more cards I could do. Uh, I don't love Street Wraith. My life total feels precious here. That just gives me four cards. I think I'm good with that. I guess there's worlds where I can consider Subtlety as well, but eh. 
or I guess rather additional copies of Subtlety, because I think I have one in the main deck, yeah. Uh, how fast do I need to be? Like, is this fine? Maybe this is fine. I I'm on the draw. I have three redraws here. I have a Subtlety for if I want to just, like, do a tempo play. I think I'm good with that. That feels like a spell pierce. Um, this is probably fetching red. I'm gonna play out an Ottawara as a land. I see myself using my land drops pretty frequently in this match. Like, I see myself spending most of my mana or otherwise having mana available to play around like spell pierce type effects. All right, what do you got? I'm unsure if I want to subtlety a sprite dragon here. I'm gonna cycle this river winder and then decide another curator. Um, since I have two reasonable plays here, and like this is just a three three flyer for graveyard, I don't know. Like, no, no, I think I, I think I will just go ahead and buy myself some time here. Like my opponent's playing a tempo deck. Like making tempo swings in my favor is probably reasonable. Fry Dragon, unsurprisingly, is on top of their library. Alright. Turtle is respectable. I will probably just unsummon that with my turn, just straight up. Yeah, um, assuming my opponent plays that again, I will I will just unsummon that and be fine with it. Like I'll I'll take my tempo plays. I can work towards hard casting 4433 three flyers if I need to. Yep, as expected. I'll kind of let that go to combat, see if they uh and anything else at my face. If they don't, I will still just bounce it. Like, be maximum annoying here. Have three very respectable sized creatures in graveyard. Um, let's do some cycling here, I think. Um, I don't know that I cycle both. Well, like, grief around spell pierce and make a plan. Yeah, my opponent responds to this. What do you have over there? Okay. How big is this thing? 6-5 Flying Ward. I don't know what to take. I can just, like, take a Sprite Dragon and, like, operate under the assumption that, like, a 5-5 five, five Hexproof and a 6-7 Flying Ward and a 3-3 three, three Flyer and another 4-4 four, four Flyer and another 4-4 four, four Flyer beats my opponent if I draw a way to Living End. I can also just take the spell pierce and open up living end towards actually working. Yeah, I think I'm gonna let my opponent use mana for creatures and take their spell pierce and work towards actually comboing off. I don't think I am going to shock this turn to cycle this. I think I'll just save my life points and let my opponent play out their stuff. All right, there's the dragon. I assume the swift spear comes down immediately afterwards. Yes. And see if my opponent um just like goes for the immediate gut shot. I assume the answer is yes, yeah. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and take a tapped red source here. Not pay the life. And take a little bit of damage. I'm setting myself up so that a living end is just like exceptionally good. Um, but like I do have to worry about just the onboard stuff. I think I start with just cycling this and digging and then intending on brazen borrowing sprite dragon back to my opponent's hand. That will probably be worth shocking for, I think. I don't know, I can just like brazen borrow it and cycle this next turn, still be able to draw into a living end. Okay, let's just do that tapped. Okay, opponent is just absolutely going for drawing cards here. Absolutely. Um, at this point, do I just snap off Brazen Borrower on Sprite Dragon because I know it resolves right now? Whereas if they play land, Spell Pierce becomes live again. Probably. Get out of my way. And I'm probably not taking too much damage this turn. Yep, just taking one. That's fine. Um, that is not the draw that I am looking for. Or looking for anything that allows me to living end. Um, I need to do a quick check to see if my opponent plays any two mana counter spells specifically. Yes, there are actual factual counter spells here, in which case I think I will just violent outburst now. Yeah, 
I will I will play around actual factual counter spell and not play around spell pierce. All right, so let's cast cast this. My opponent will get a sprite dragon back. Kappa. All right, so that gets to counter that. I, I played around the four of in the list that I was looking at and got caught by the two of. Like it's okay, it happens. Um, opponent could vapor snag their own swift spear if they really wanted. Put another counter on this. All right, um, I am gonna need to like draw another enabler here. I know what my opponent's last card is. Um, but I do need to get something in a hurry. Um, that's not a something. All right. Um, I guess I don't play this now because of Vapor Snag. Like if I play this now, I end up taking more damage than if I don't. Right? Because like this gets plus one, this gets plus one. Yeah, I'll play at end of turn instead. I guess. All right. I'm at eight. I don't know. Maybe I don't even play this. Like, if I play this, it just gives my opponent a Vapor Snag target. Like, I go to 7, they get 2 additional damage out of it. It gets a card out of their hand. But it, like, also gives them another shot at getting Delirium for Dragon Raid Channeler. Yeah, maybe I don't play this. And just, like, try to draw into something that allows me to Living End instead. Might just have bottomed out here, though. Uh, yeah, I think I take the, th take the 3 again. Just try to draw something that beats this. Um, yeah, they're going to vapor snag their own creature. All right, sure. That puts me to eight. I'll take four here. Go to four. Dragon Rage Channeler comes back down. Okay, am I casting Brazen Borrower? Assuming my opponent has no removal spells, I block Sprite Dragon. I take three damage. I am dead to literally any spell. Or no, that's not actually true. Yeah, maybe I do cast this just in case. It, like, it may buy me one more turn to cast this now. I'll do it before this thing is in play. And I don't think I fetch with Misty. Okay. Uh, I am so set up to top deck something that lets me cascade into Living End and win this game. Gotta get there. I'm so set up to do it. Uh, Waker of Waves does not do that innately. But it gets me... Who looks at something that does. There is a Shardless Agent. Fuck yeah. Um, I do not want to attack with this. Put another creature in my opponent's graveyard. Alright, there is Shardless Agent. Oh my god. Really? Oh. I have one in hand, one in graveyard, one in exile. <sighs> okay. Next game. That is disappointing. For a lot of decision points, that game where I could have navigated something differently. Uh, yeah, I, I lost that one for drawing a copy of Living End. That's super unfortunate. I didn't math it out, but I think my opponent was just on like a one turn clock there. I don't think I'm going to make any changes to sideboarding. Uh, let's just like not draw Living End this time, huh? Start with Living End in hand. Um, is this hand find anyway? Hands okay. Not great, just okay. If I just draw more lands, this isn't fantastic. Most of my hands should have a way to turn three living end. Like, uh, I'm so impacted by the fact that I just lost a game because I had a living end in hand. I'm not sure how to appropriately evaluate that in this matchup. I'm going to ship this one. I like this hand so much better. I'll just uh, pitch my Force of Negation here and play fair. Pitch Force. Like, af after going down on cards, I don't want to pitch cast a card unless it is probably just winning me the game on the spot. All right. What do you got? Dragon Rage Channeler on turn one's a little spooky. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a little spooky boy. Let's start cycling. Okay. Um, that's fantastic. That means I can attempt to go for it next turn, should I so desire. I'm currently unsure whether or not I so desire. It may be that I just go for an in-combat endurance ambush, depending on uh, what my opponent's working with over there. All right, another consider goes to graveyard. We're not immediately, um, like, at delirium. I don't expect to take a billion damage this turn. Now, taking one like this is just totally fine. Um, we'll see what the follow-up is. 
Another one? Absolutely. I think I'm gonna cycle two one drops here and play towards the world where I do just jam next turn. Yeah, I think attempting to take two Dragon Rage Channelers out of play is worth jamming for. Um, let's go for it. All right, so this is attempt number one of the game for a living end. Opponent needs Force of Negation here. Cast Living End. All right, opponent has Gut Shot. I guess they are trying to surveil a creature into their graveyard. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. I think I pitch cast Endurance now. Yeah, I think I pitch cast Endurance now. A little weird if they counter Living End now, but it feels good. Yeah, target them. Junk the graveyard. Endurance goes there, and now Living End happens. Okay, we're doing a gut shot fight again. Okay, yeah. Yep, okay, they found a Stormwing Entity. But, uh, I think I've got this. Oh, oh god, what a mess of triggers. Okay. I'll just target myself here, and I will Endurance you. There's a world where I use Architects of Will on my opponent there, but I would rather just, like, find my fourth land drop and have a castable 4-4 flyer on this board, I think. All right, nuke your graveyard. Put these back in any order, okay? Um, so I'll just probably... Uh, actually, I might end up shocking a good portion of the time with this. All right. Um, I've, I've got the superior board here by a pretty decent amount. I think I will probably be in a world where I can just turn these creatures sideways for two or three turns and just win. Um, we'll see what opponent can do. Okay, yeah, there there is the concession. All right, uh, GG's. What are we two and one now? Two and one. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, please consider doing something to support me. You can do plenty of things for free without using any money, uh, like liking and commenting on the video or subscribing to the channel. Those sorts of things support me, and if you're in a position that you can support me financially, you can do so by doing a donation deck list, becoming a YouTube member, or uh, following me on Patreon. All right, that's the plug. Back to the magic. Okay, um, this hand has no land, and I don't think I want to gamble a seven-card hand on hitting something with Street Wraith here. I'm just going to mulligan this one and try to find something safer. Um, this hand only has two redraws. It's not great. Probably can't do a pitch cast grief with this hand. I think I keep this and junk the grief here. I think I'll just play Ottawara on one with the intention to cycle. Oh, okay. Uh, we're under the gun. So we're potentially playing against something similar to what we saw last round, although we might just be playing against full-on burn instead. Um, let's let's start digging. Um, I just need to take the, re the immediate redraw here. All right, Vasaju is not what I'm looking for. 100% of the time, I'm going to end up getting a blue-red dual land here since I have untapped green in hand already off Botanical Sanctum. Um, I guess I could treat this as a scry, though. be perfectly happy with that. All right, Goblin Guide, what are we looking at? Guardless Agent on top of Library. That can stay. That can stay. I'll take three damage. And go ahead and just draw that shardless agent. Um, I don't think I need red mana immediately. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and grab basic island to be kinder to my life total here. And just do a baby sized living end. Like this is taking, I'll do this on myself, I guess. Okay. Um, cards aren't exactly great. I'm just going to draw the guardless agent next turn and then shuffle. Alright. So I have a lot of power in play relative to my opponent. Yeah. Okay. That's good enough for a concession. Fantastic. I am going to operate under the assumption that I am playing against mono red burn. Um, playing the same game that I'm playing every round. Is this a chalice deck? I'll, I'll talk about this explicitly in the deck tech, or I guess like the debrief at the end, but 
I, I normally don't try to look up specific lists while playing, but like with this deck, it is so important for me to know what my opponent's sideboard cards are that it's like basically unavoidable. All right. Modern red deck wins. Let's look at the one from the showcase challenge. The answer is no. They're a white version. They could have Sanctifier Invac. They could have Roiling Vortex, which would be annoying. Yeah, looks like Roiling Vortex is pretty common. Eidolon is also something that, like, a Foundation Breaker could hit. Go all Street Wraiths out. It's gonna get me a Ley Line or two. That'll get me two Foundation Breakers. I. Going to cut some land for forest, I think. Ottawara? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Second breeding pool, I guess, is reasonable as well. And yeah, maybe second breeding pool is more reasonable. Do that. And then I could consider playing like a brazen borrower or an endurance or something to round things out. I do have one subtlety. Uh, actually, the griefs get considerably worse if I am boarding out Street Wraith because they just become hard to evoke. Yeah, do I just want a couple of 3-4s that hold the ground and are more easily pitch castable? I could buy that. I could also just buy playing a 20th land because like me getting to 3 mana every single game on curve is super important. Um yeah, let's let's make that change. Like I I like the idea of grief, but like I don't have that many things to pitch to it at the end of the day. Um, yeah, this is fine. I have a force of negation for a particularly scary card. Um, I technically have two. Um, this is going to be getting me a basic island. I'm going to go ahead and just take care of that now, although I won't, uh, I won't cycle immediately. I'll wait on that, but I know I'm getting this island. Yeah, and this is what I'm talking about. Um, let's cycle first, and then probably Force of Negation, pitching Force of Negation. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, do not want to draw that Living End. Yeah, this will just be a Waker of Waves turn, and then I'll decide whether or not two creatures in Graveyard is enough for what's going on here. I'm at 13 already, so, like, it just may have to be good enough. Yeah, that's 10. Yeah, I think this is Stone Cold a, a race, but a curator of mysteries into my hand. Uh, that's actually a fantastic draw because that means I can shardless agent without having to shock at all. How big is this? Yeah, okay. This is this is just going to be a fast enough clock where I think I win a good portion of the time. There's living and oh, I guess let's just like target my opponent here, and I'll just put their worst cards on top. Um, which of these is the worst card? Is it just Roiling Vortex? Because I don't intend on casting. Yeah, yeah it's actually, it's just Roiling Vortex because I just have Foundation Breaker in hand. You fly. You don't fly, so Swift Spear is a blocker for you. Yeah. Just Swift Spear, then Lightning Bolt, then Roiling Vortex on top. Yeah, this is this is just a two-turn clock on my end. Okay, very much didn't want to draw that. Uh, I don't think it matters too much. Uh, let's bash in there. Brings my opponent to six. I guess I can just cycle this. Have a Boseju. I will just play that as a land, I think. I just have Foundation Breaker already. I think I'm good with that. All right, that puts me to four. Um, opponent has Lightning Bolt on top. I guess I can die to Bolt Bolt. Yeah, I guess I should have ordered that differently. All right, I guess that's on me. But I didn't want to give them the chump blocker for this and give them another turn to stay alive. Yeah, so that would have been chump block for this. A Bolt goes here. That would have given them another turn. Yeah, I don't know. I think I like how I've boarded. I could consider Force of Vigor as well. Um, But at some point, I just need to keep a decent density of, like, cyclers and i feel like cyclers would probably be coming out for these things okay um i am going to keep this hand recognizing that there is a risk that i might stumble but i think that's okay because leyline of sanctity probably buys me a decent amount of time and i have answers to things like roiling vortex in hand as well 
Like, I'm assuming my opponent has boarded out some number of their creatures, both because they are on the draw and because I'm a living end deck. Uh, so, like, I think this is pretty good. Like, it could be wrong. Like, they could just, like, lead on a fucking goblin guide here because it's just so efficient. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and treat this like a scry here and see if the goblin guide feeds me a land. It does. Go ahead and take two here. I think this can just grab a basic island, save me the life, and cycle Architects of Will. All right, island, cycle. Here's a living end. We're real good at drawing those. Um, I'm just going to cycle my river winder here and see if I draw a land that I would like to play ETB tapped. I do not. Play this one. Um, this is awkward for me because if there's something that I have to force of negation, I have to give up Shardless Agent to do it, which I do not want to do. Um, so I'll have some real choices to make if this is a Roiling Vortex. I think I just let that go and play Foundation Breaker on it on my turn and take two here. Goblin Guide feeds me a land. Goblin Guide does. All right, cool. All right. Um... Am I good with evoking this turn, or do I just want to take five to the dome to uh, do my thing? I think I'm good with evoking. All right. It just gives me one more creature in graveyard, which seems relevant right now. So I have Force of Negation pitching Force of Negation. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so this is good damage for my opponent this turn. Ooh, I wonder if they're going to, like, lightning bolt themselves or something for some prowess triggers. They are lightning bolting themselves for some prowess triggers. That uh, doesn't do any good to force of negation, that. Quite the opposite, in fact. All right. So, I basically always want Scalding Tarn here. At this point, or, sorry, I always want Steam Vents here. Let's see if Goblin Guy gives me land. No, there's a River Winder. Sure. All right, so I take six here, and then I board wipe. Uh, with a shardless agent. I imagine that's good enough for a win with a ley line in play. Um, like, I've been wrong before. Um, target myself. I'd like another untapped green source. Uh, this is a may. I do have to select a target and then I just say no. Uh, okay, most of this stuff isn't fantastic. I'm probably just holding up Force of Negations for the rest of the game after this turn. Um, I guess I'll put Foundation Breaker on top. All right, opponent, you got your you got your work cut out for you. Okay, and there is just the concession point. Uh, I think we're up to three and one now. It feels good. All right, um, I have multiple cyclers here and the ability to cast a turn three Shardless Agent. This is totally a fine hand. Take a little self damage. Um, Probably six-ish self-damage with this hand. But, like, I'm on the play, so it's fine. What's lead on Cycle Street Wraith? Like, Jig jig is up, but I would rather have options. Okay, so I can lead on this land. Just, I, I guess I can wait on the cycling. It probably doesn't matter. But, like, maybe there's a world where I change my mind about which one of these I want to cycle. All right, Delta. Are we playing against a shadow deck? Um, very possible. Uh, Thoughtseize is going to take this shardless agent. Um, I guess I don't actually cycle these now, right? Because, like, my opponent is just taking the shardless agent, and I don't want to show them that I have a second one or something. All right, yep. And it goes down. Very good at drawing living ends. That's a skill. Okay, so let's... Cycle one of these bad boys. There's an Ottawara. Do I want to play that? Bouncing a creature is a very real thing, but so is my life total. I think I'm going to save that and fetch a basic island here. And then just cycle this. Okay, there's another Shardless Agent. I am in the clear to go off for next turn if my opponent does not use another discard spell on me. Opponent is a hater. I guess playing around Inquisition of Kozilek is actually a reason to not cycle that immediately, though. Like, to be fair. That's something I wasn't thinking of. 
Okay, yeah, like I, I did not dodge a removal spell because of the timing at which I chose to do that. Or sorry, a discard spell. Okay. Bonin is going real deep here on uh, self damage. Ottawara is looking good as a spell in my hand. Um, I also just might get to the point where I just straight up play some idiot and just poke my opponent twice with it and they die. There's also like worlds where my opponent is not done doing self damage yet, right? Okay, yeah, there's some more. Going to five even. Um, do I want to Ottawara immediately? I don't think I need to. I think I'm just going to start getting these ETB tapped lands out of the way. Uh, dress down is fine. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, a Death Shadow is big. There's a 13-13 right now, but that's about to change because the Dress Down is currently buffing it. So the Dress Down is shutting off its ability. So as soon as this is out of play, it turns into an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yep. Uh, go ahead and uh, throw that into play tapped. Ottawara bounce this thing out of play. Okay. More, more self-damage. Okay. They either are out or chose not to go any deeper than that. Uh, unfortunately, while this Ottawara saves me 9 life, it only costs my mana, my opponent 1 mana, um, in terms of, like, tempo and whatnot. So, like, it's a fine play, but it doesn't really end up with me in an awesome situation afterwards. Alright, yep, there, it's back. Uh, there is a Violent Outburst. That is fantastic. For Spell Pierce type cards, I am just going to play a an untapped Bo Seiju, I think, and call it a turn. And I'll fire this off in my opponent's upkeep. I don't want them to draw another card here and just have one more look at a counter spell. Like, there's a very good chance that this does not resolve. All right, I Cascade into the living end. Opponent's got to have something over there. Ground in the lock is not unexpected. And I am... Going to need another relevant top deck next turn. Um, getting hit for nine, and that's just a two-turn clock. So, like, I have plenty of things that can chump block, but that's not super profitable. I'd like to just draw another thing that lets me cascade into my remaining living end. That's not going to do it. All right, GG's. Yeah, I, I lost that one for cycling with the wrong timing. Well, I potentially lost that one, right? Like, opponent could have had multiple different counter spells and still won it, but, like, I hurt my own chances by not playing around a weird interaction of my cycler costing less than three mana, and or sorry, more than three mana, whereas the card that I drew did not. Skimming a couple of lists, it looks like there's a really good variety of things that my opponent could be playing for sideboard hate. So I might want a couple of these, like, foundation breaker type cards to kind of hedge against that stuff. And I also potentially want Leyline to hedge against discard. I think I'm going to junk subtlety. I think I like the Swamp Walk ability of Street Wraith. I think I'm going to keep those, despite the fact that my life total does matter. Not sure how I feel about Force of Negation. Like, fighting back against Counterspells on my opponent's turn specifically is pretty neat. But if I'm boarding in some things to hedge against stuff my opponent is doing, and especially if I want to board in some number of Endurance as well to nuke Graveyards, play around Merktide Regents, then, like, my slots have to come from somewhere. What does it look like if I do this? This brings me back to 60 without starting to account for Endurance. Endurance is fine just as a card that I can cast and beat my opponent to death with. Um, oh. mm. I don't have a lot more time to think. I spent time pulling up the list instead. And I am so good at drawing living ends. Um, that said, I have four different cyclers in this hand. I probably still just keep this one and just only have two chances to fully go off. So playing around Inquisition, I don't actually want to cycle anything until my opponent has used their mana. My opponent kept their starting hand as well. All right, end of turn. Now let's start by cycling the more expensive cards. Uh, that's a dead draw. Always shocking. And I can make a decision on 
waker of waves versus double curator of mysteries depending on what my opponent does on their turn okay sure my opponent is going for the shock to make their death shadows uh closer to live i think as of right now i'm going for double cycle just to get deeper into my deck because i want to find a land drop and i also want to find an enabler if i find the enabler that just gives me a lot of power in play but We'll see, there's things that can change that. Okay, there is a chalice on zero. Brought in some answers to that preemptively. Um, I'm gonna actually now keep these for the worlds where I end up just hard casting them. And I'm just gonna like look, oh gosh, that's uh I think I just take the land though, like chalice is in play. Yeah, let's just take the land and work towards hard casting some four drops. Yeah, there we go. I think I will Waker of Waves now to see if I draw a land that I can just play apt. I think I like that. Uh, there is a land. I like that better than Violent Outburst given Chalice in play. Even though, like, I don't really need this many lands. All right, good stuff. Ooh, we are seeing the Tainted Indulgence again. Wow, really? No, oh, okay, I guess, like, Dealing three damage to yourself is reasonable in this deck. Just like, it's gotta be near impossible to actually cast the front side of that. I don't, well, I guess it pitches to Force of Negation. I think I bring in Brazen Borrower next game if there is a next game. Right, I guess I just let my opponent play a Curator of Mist, or take a Curator of Mysteries, and then I hard cast the other one on my turn. This can get me the other breeding pool, I guess, and then I can get Island off of this. Oh, that's not a castable card in my deck. Um, super, super happy with that decision from my opponent here. Let's grab breeding pool. Oh, and then this just gets a basic Island. And we are on operation cards I would play in draft. All right, uh, this one's resolved. Doesn't mean a lot, like opponent's deck has plenty of removal spells in it. Oh no, it's a Merktide Regent. Um, actually, I wonder how bad that actually is. Like, that's a shield right now, that's not a sword. Yeah. Just like, get this tapped land out of the way. Asked this, I have 8 power in play. I am winning if my opponent attacks with this. Like, I get hit for 6, they get hit for 8, I'm on a 2 turn clock. Or sorry, they're on a two-turn clock. All right. I kill them in two turns, they kill me in three turns. Uh, yeah, absolutely, I will I will take that hit. Do you have another flyer or a death shadow or something? If you don't, I'm good with the current situation. If you do, I'm in trouble. And probably end up with a 3-2 in the league. Yeah, it is a 1-1. One, one. Uh, however, however... I attack for 8, I increase the size of the Death Shadow by 8. Might be setting myself up to double block Merktide Regent and then get just ranched. Do I... I have a Forest boarded in. I can only take 2 damage to play this. Right, whoever winder on my next turn. I might need to play towards that. Yeah, I might need to play towards that. I can also cycle this thing. My hits are only medium in comparison to this card. All right, I think I'm chilling now. Oh, yeah, that Death Shadow was just so awkward for me. All right, uh, if opponent has a removal spell, I think they just win this one. Um, but we'll see if they are going to try to play more defensively and try to wait me out. I'm going in with both creatures. Boy, a Dismember is good here. I, I think I am going to go for the double block. Um, life's pretty bad, though. Yeah, this grows the Death Shadow a bit, meaning I take more damage. If they have something like a Dismember on top of that, uh, it's just disgusting. All right, uh, I absolutely just have to cycle here and try to get something that messes with this. All right, play line of Sanctity. Bottom. Earn target creature with its owner's hand. I can... Bounce the Merktide Regent here, actually. Yeah, let's do that. I'll take that draw. Bounce Merktide Regent out of the way. It's going to give me more scries. 
I might need to just fetch here. But if I was going to fetch, I should have done it already. I don't know, maybe I play conservatively with this. Living end. Bottom. Misty Rainforest. Bottom. Now I've got like four cards on bottom that I don't want to draw. Alright, so... I take four here going to six. Ottawara. This is very close to working. I think I go ahead and take my hit in here. Get my opponent to five. Intend on bouncing the Death's Shadow. And hoping my opponent deals one point of damage to themselves or something. Or that I just like find something that can chump block a Death's Shadow for a turn. Oh, this is tight. It is Ottawara time. One, two, three, four. Bounce that out of the way. I get yet another scry. Feels good to cycle with these things in play. A street wraith is not what I am looking for right now. That can go to bottom. Collected so many bricks on the bottom of my library. Here comes the death shadow again. I just have to draw something relevant. Oseju doesn't really count. It almost counts, though. So I'm going to take a chump block on Death Shadow. I'm going to Boseju you that chalice, and then I'm going to hope that I draw a living end, I think. I'm, I'm one point away from having my opponent dead. Ah! <laughs> uh, this is a uh, nerve wracking. In a good way, I'm enjoying this a lot. Drown in the lock. Yeah. Uh, yep, that, that leaves me dead on. Fortunately, uh, with nothing really to say about it. GG's. Um, so we end up at 3-2 in this league. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. Pretty respectable. Um, I don't really think this is my style of deck, personally. Like, there's so much variance in whether or not you draw a living end, like, preventing you from attempting your combo multiple times. And this is like a deck that can shift into like a controlling role or like a sword and shield role where you go on the defensive a decent amount of time. Like as those games drag on, every time you draw a living end, you just like lose out on so many options. I'm not the biggest fan of that. So like this probably wouldn't be the competitive tournament deck for me, but I think this deck is pretty powerful. I also think that this deck scales in power level as your knowledge of the format increases because you know exactly what you play around. Like, I lost a game in that last round for not playing around uh, a, like, set of very specific uh, interactions involving an Inquisition of Kozilek. Um, and there were probably other things in this league that worked out similarly. Um, kind of medium on subtlety at the end of the day. Although, uh, honestly, we, like, maybe didn't play against the matchups where subtlety is at its best because we played against so many decks with just, like, mana-efficient one-drops as the threat. Whereas if opponent is like tapping out for a five mana spell or something and you subtlety that, like that is very much a real tempo loss for them that matters. Um, yeah, generally speaking, I like the deck. I really like the forest in the sideboard to help supplement those extra creatures there. Um, yeah, so like this deck gets a thumbs up for me as far as like power level and how it's built. But I'll say like this is probably not my preference for decks that I personally would want to play for a prolonged period of time. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the content. If, if you did, please leave me a like before you go. That is the easiest way to support me for free. And if you're really enjoying the content, please consider doing something to support me financially, like becoming a YouTube member, pledging on Patreon, or throwing me a Twitch Prime subscription. Have a great rest of the day, folks. See ya!